slide, I will show images of meningeal enhancement. And there are two major patterns, pachymeningeal and leptomeningeal enhancement. In pachymeningeal enhancement, there is enhancement of the dura and the outer part of the arachnoid. So the enhancement follows the contours of the inside of the skull and the falx. In leptomeningeal enhancement, there is enhancement of the inner part of the arachnoid and the pia. So leptomeningeal enhancement follows the surface of the brain. And in this case of leptomeningeal metastasis, you can see the enhancement between the cerebellar foliae where there is relatively a lot of meningeal covering, a lot of brain surface. Another example of leptomeningeal enhancement is in this case of leptomeningeal melanocytosis. And you can see that the enhancement is in the sulcus itself. So you can discriminate it from cortical gyriform enhancement, which would be two lines with some CSF in between. If you look at the histology of the meninges, you can see three different layers. And this is a human embryo, six weeks old. And this was the nicest histologic image I could find, where you can see the thick dura lying against the skull with a periosteal and an inner meningeal layer. Then there's the arachnoid, bridging the space between the skull and the brain surface. And the pia covers the brain surface and follows the gyri and sulci of the brain. Very recently, this year in 2023, the group from Maiken Nedergaard, who also described the glymphatic system in 2013, came up with a fourth membrane surrounding the brain. And this membrane was located in the subarachnoid space and it had lymphatic-like properties. So they called it a subarachnoid lymphatic-like membrane. And this mesothelium-like structure divides the subarachnoid space into different compartments. It disintegrates post-mortem, so that is why it has not been described before and it is not visible on imaging. But it is interesting to think that this subarachnoid lymphatic like membrane might coincide with the inner margin of the pachymeningeal enhancement and the outer margin of leptomeningeal enhancement on MRI of the brain. Of course, there are also diseases that have more complex patterns of meningeal enhancement. For example, a lymphoma, which is a small round blue cell tumor and is notorious for not respecting anatomical boundaries and squeezing and crawling through all the tissues, growing very infiltrative. And a metastatic lymphoma is more often located extraaxial than the primary lymphoma, which is more often intraaxial. And this metastatic lymphoma can give both dural and leptomeningeal enhancement. Another striking pattern is neurosarcoidosis, where there is both enhancement of the basal leptomeninges and extension in the perivascular spaces. And this pattern can also be seen in other granulomatous diseases. And I am going to show images of that next time.